Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 3 of our Feed the Beast Neotech series. Today I want to jump right into things, so I've gone ahead and made myself another steam blast furnace here. This time it's not going to be for steel like this guy here, however I have a fluid output hatch because we're going to be making ourselves some synthetic oil. Now this is very important because we're going to be needing synthetic oil for our rubber sheets which will make wires and connectors and all that. So this is what we need to do. Now before that I'm probably going to go ahead and upgrade all of our machines to steel tier which is very easy in this pack. All you have to do is make these steel upgrades here which is steel machine casing in some bronze and then some more fire clay bricks and fluid pipes. And I've been making a bunch of steel off camera here and I've been smelting up a lot of our ores here. So so this setup is pretty chaotic but it works pretty simply. This guy here is forcefully inputted into this chest so this is just ores and raw processed ores goes in here and cycles through and outputs this chest. This chest automatically will whitelist pump out these ores here so that means any crushed ores or any raw ores will cycle back through and then restart the process. That simple as that. Anything down in this chest here will be automatically outputted into our bronze furnace when it can be so any dust and stuff and that will smelt into ingots and then in here we have all of our coal dust redstone dust sulfur which comes from coal bauxite which will be tin eventually or sorry aluminum eventually and then we have our few other things here as well now this guy is automatically pumping out with this yellow cable here which is very chaotic but it is automatically putting into our bronze boilers so we always permanently have power and then obviously we have our water pump so it's just a recursive system very small but very inefficient i should have a macerator and a furnace or two macerators in a furnace for each ore eventually and i probably will set that up today at some point however for now we just have our iron barrel over here collecting all of our ores from our quarry and it's just been going for a while as you can see plus all the ores in here already and everything in here it's been going for a decent amount of time and we have a decent amount of stuff but anyways, I'd want to hop right into the crafting of all the steel grades and then jump right into oil production. Now I should be able to just right click these on and apply them. Shift right click, there we go. Okay, awesome. So I'm just gonna upgrade all of our machines. And yeah, that's all the machines we actually have. Now how much faster are these guys? Wow, that is so much faster. I should have done these immediately. Now how much steam is this producing? It doesn't actually tell me, I don't think. 32,000, no, it doesn't seem to tell me. However, I am running out of water. Oh, it's because I haven't upgraded this guy. Also, right here, I have been making a lot of packed mud. And if it's daytime, I will show you why. Just up here, I'm at the top of our base. Well, just looking over top of it. And as you see, I've gone ahead and finished off the roof with mud bricks. Down there, I just built a little wheat farm so we can get some mud, uh, packed mud for the roof itself. And then we just used the recipe right here to make mud in the mixer with just water and dirt. Very simple. Now, if you're wondering what the plans for my base this series is, is I plan to have this as my main house and then have a sprawling little village to match all of the sprawling little villages around my base in general and we're going to have a start of a factory start to lay out up on these giant sprawling steeps right on the highlands I want different levels to the factory and maybe Steve's carts to transport stuff around and up and around the mountain I'm not entirely sure it's probably very ambitious but we'll see what we actually get done in this series however for now I just want to focus on tech progression and we'll see what we get All right, and that's some synthetic oil being produced. So as you see, I'm just simply moving the water into a new mixer here, along with a pipe of steam, and then just pulling the synthetic oil from our coke dust. I just turned the output and input hatches around so that coke dust is easier to access. And then I just fed it along the same background here and stuck it into the input hatch on the back. Now we are producing synthetic oil. I have a few more steps ahead of me to actually get this into synthetic rubber. Now, 
synthetic oil itself can be used in a bodily machine to make rubber sheets. However, a bodily machine is immersive engineering and we would need power for that. So that is simply not going to work. However, that is a way to actually do it. This is completely fine later in the, down the line. However, currently what we're going to have to do is produce 4 EU per tick, which is fine with our steam and produce synthetic oil with sulfur dust. And then this will make synthetic rubber. And then here we have to actually mix this with paper to get rubber sheets. So 100 millibuckets with one paper gives 12 rubber sheets, which is a much better deal than 200 giving four. Now, sulfur isn't an issue. We have a thousand, well, we almost have 2000 sulfur in here, thanks to our quarry here, which produces coal into sulfur. So the only other issue is a paper farm, and that is actually so simple to do. All you need is a bit of snad. Now, snad is simply two pieces of sand put together. And if you've never used snad before, all it is, is if you provide a redstone pulse to it, it will grow whatever is on top of it faster. So if I come down here, I'll just put a hole in the wall real quick. Not a big deal. I'll throw some sand down. I will throw some water down and we'll throw our sugar cane down. This is just an example. However, now that it is placed on some snad, as you see at the top, shift right, right. So anytime you provide it with a redstone pulse, it will grow what's on top of it, which is super useful. So what we're going to do is we're just going to make a quick timer, basic redstone. There isn't any timers or clocks in this pack specifically, unless you want to do some Steve's cards magic, which is kind of pointless. We're just going to use two repeaters pointing to each other. And yes, that is, that does cause tick grow, uh, tick delay and it will cause TPS like on in a server or on your world. However, I'm not going to run it permanently because running a farm at this size where it's going to be five long with snad won't, will produce so much sugarcane that we won't need it on permanently. I'm only going to turn it on when I need it. However, that is the basic concept. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to process this nether quartz because I went to the nether and what I can do with this is once it's processed is crush it double crush the quartz so we'll go up here like this and once that's processed what you have to do is compress the core into nether quartz dust and then we can make ourselves some observers and then we'll make a simple sugarcane farm and once we're done that we can set up a mixing assembly to get this processed into two rubber sheets and that is done now that is our sugarcane farm completed i will show you how this guy works we have a barrel here for storage collection it is simply a gold barrel with an advanced magnet upgrade and two stack upgrades. So this guy can fit a lot of sugarcane without any worry. Here is just set to allow on sugarcane and that is so it only picks up sugarcane. And yeah, as you see, this guy is producing sugarcane very, very fast. Now the inner workings of this guy is simply just a two tick redstone clock, just infinitely pulsing. And that is just going into a set of repeaters pointed into some snad. And then up here, all we have is a single observer ticking and that is going into a line of repeaters into the pistons. Now the reason did this is just so they're in pretty much synchronization otherwise these would all fire at random intervals and it just doesn't look too nice so that is what we have it is just simply glass hidden behind and it, it just looks really nice i probably would have done it one further maybe i'm not sure but it does look nice and flush with the wall so i can't complain and yeah we're just connecting collecting infinite shuriken as you see we're getting what 10 every second or so maybe 10 every uh one and a half seconds so yeah it's pretty efficient efficient and we won't run this at all times. I will eventually just hit this redstone right here and it turns the entire farm off. Now the redstone obviously still ticks but for now we're just gonna leave the guy running. I'll put a door in there eventually but yeah this is our sugarcane farm and now we can start producing rubber.
And our rubber factory is online. Now I say factory in air quotes because it is very simple. It's not very a factory at all. So this steam blast furnace that's making synthetic oil from before is just force output into a tank which gets mixed into the steel mixer. I have this just in case it was backlog but it doesn't seem there's ever going to be backlog so realistically this mixer can go directly on top like right beside the output and it'd be fine. Our sulfur dust is actually just being fed through a pipe that's going underground as you saw and the sulfur dust is being extracted and put into here. This is also just being brought over to this mixer over here to mix a with paper. The paper is being sugarcane compressed right from here. It is just being inputted with an item pipe underneath, making paper being once again force output into the steel mixer and making rubber sheets. Now what I'm going to do is make another barrel similar to this guy, or maybe I loop it back around. I'm not sure. I could also just put the barrel on top to be honest and then have an item pipe going out the back because this is still in range I believe. If I do it this way, where did my barrel go? If I do it here, that should still collect. Yeah, it definitely does. You know what? We might do this actually. So we'll do item output on the top. We'll do barrel here just so we can save on barrel for now. And then what we'll do is we'll remove these item pipes and fill this in like this. And we can simply do, wait, no, that's backwards. Extract, insert, and then we want to whitelist sugarcane, whitelist sugarcane. And that should be all said and done. Now we have an automatic rubber farm that's self-contained and it's pretty spread out, but it still works quite efficiently. As you see, all of our rubber is being produced. We already have 636 just from that small time I was setting it up. So that's not bad at all. And as you see, this is going up decently fast. And yeah, we have a whole on rubber farm now. However, the quest does still want us to collect a bucket of synthetic oil. So I'm going to turn this guy off just for a second and let this steel tank here fill up with a bucket of oil and then we can let it run again. However, we do have a bunch of rubber on us and it is working very, very well. So if you would like to copy this design, it is very easy. It only requires the four machines as well as obviously the process for the quarry to get the sulfur and the steam blast furnace but these are all things you're going to be requiring anyways and the setup is very easy to do with modern industrialization pipes so it, it, it's very clean it, it looks really nice even though it's this far separated i can do it with all the pipes simply connecting underground i really like this i'm not going to lie now another thing you might have noticed while we're down here is that i have a lot of fluid tanks full of creosote oil and that is because well creosote just keeps pumping out of our coke oven and i don't really have any Anything to do with it at the moment. I could craft a bunch of treated wood. However, I don't have much use for it. Now, later on the line, we will be able to make railroad tracks. We'll make lubricant, uh, phenolic resin, phenolic resin, but that's about it. I don't have much else use for this. However, treated wood will be used in a few different recipes later down the line, such as once we get into our storage controller for our sophisticated storage. So that will be nice. However, there isn't much else I will be doing with treated wood. So I'm probably going to void a lot of it off because I can't just keep making 100 fluid tanks. So what we're going to do is stick a backpack with a fluid tank upgrade in it. So I've already done this here. I'm going to make a gold backpack and a tank upgrade. These guys are pretty simple to make. Throw some stack upgrades in there and then throw a void upgrade in there as well and just void off any excess creosote and that should store maybe like 64 to 120 buckets. I'm not entirely sure what the math will add up to. However, I'm going to want to get rid of all these fluid tanks until we can get into larger tank storage from uh, modern industrialization. So this guy here is all cleaned up now. Now our thing is back to running. I still have not automatically set up this guy to input coal. However, manually inputting it isn't too big of a problem. I'm not too concerned for now. However, this will be automatically set up probably through the ceiling and we'll just do stone up top similar to here. However, for now, this guy is full of coal dust. I have a tank stack and void upgrade in this guy here. I don't have enough gold. Well, actually I do have enough gold to upgrade this, but I don't want to waste all my gold immediately. And plus 72 buckets 
on addition to six 32s and a 64 we have plenty enough creative sewed for now and then eventually once this guy produces once we have more coke ovens producing a bunch of coke we won't have any issue with creative sewed and we have larger storages but for now this guy is simple we have tank stack and void upgrade and is automatically being outputted from the bronze, bronze fluid hatch and i'm not sure if i showed this off but this seal mixer here is just mixing the coke dust with water to make synthetic oil and that is just being processed in the back of our steam blast furnace back here so very simple setup our rubber is going very well we already have 1700 rubber and that is pretty nice now to wrap up today's episode i want to just go ahead and make myself a wire mill and start to making the wires so that in next episode we can move on to the lv and me chapter which will be very fast and simple however we do need to start making wires and a lot of them and this guy is pretty simple it's just a bit of bronze steel and fluid pipes again so we'll go ahead and quickly make that added to our wall of machines over here that needs to be cleaned up and then we'll see what we got done so with a wire mill we can go ahead and start making tin cables and this should be as simple as throwing tin in here however i didn't actually look at the recipe it might be tin plates yeah it might actually be tin plates let's see exactly how i thought it is indeed tin plates so that's not too bad we'll just throw these guys in our compressor and we'll get some plates and then we can throw these in our wire mill and get some wires now it needs us to make tin cables which is rubber sheets surrounded by tin wires we'll grab a bunch of rubber out of our thing and we can go ahead and craft up our first set of tin wires like so and that is actually enough for the quest now there's one last thing we actually have to do before before we can get the basic machine hall here and that is making some analog circuits now these guys aren't too bad to make at all it's just a bunch of copper coal dust paper more copper a bit of rubber and some gold for the capacitors and those are all things we're getting automatically from our quarry and now with our rubber farm we have plenty of paper and rubber as well so those are very easy to make and we also are going to be required to make some battery alloy ingots now these guys are just an alloy of of antimony and lead so we have antimony dust in here already and if i grab my lead i'll throw it in a macerator which i need more of at this point and we'll just mix this up in our mixer and we'll start to get antimony or battery alloy sorry and then this guy here is simply just smelted so we'll just chuck it in our furnace And that is our first analog circuit complete. Now there's one more step to actually doing this and that is creating ourselves our first LV machine hull. Now these guys are pretty simple. It is just a steel machine casing, some tin cables and the redstone battery. Now these require some compressed battery alloy. So I'll just chuck half a stack in here, find space on the ground for all my random inventory stuff. Got to clean up my inventory here in a second. However, we can go ahead and make some more of these. There we go. Now we have four. And to make battery alloys, I just need some tin, the plates, and that. That should be enough for a single thing. Oh wait, no, it's four per. Now we should have everything we need, so we can go ahead and make two batteries. Thankfully, they stack and we can make our first machine hull. That is quest complete. Now there is two more quests in this chapter that we have to complete before the pack, the chapter itself finished as the immersive blast furnace. Oh, it's not actually uh, optional, but it's simply just smelting nether bricks. So that's very easy to complete. It is making the water tank, which we can't do until we have an electric packer, which is weird to combine, put in this quest, but it makes sense that it's off the steel water pump. And then we have to make all the components for the LVH and that will wrap up today's episode now we did get a rubber farm going in the background fully automated and we have everything here fully automated for the first chapter of our quest book however next episode we're going to delve into the electronic age of lv and there is a lot of stuff here to do so get ready for that i'm going to hopefully clean this area up a bit more maybe 
make sure all the piping is all set up so we can have a smooth and easy transition into the LV gauge. And I'll see you guys then. So if you guys did enjoy this episode, leave a like on the video. It means a lot. If you learned something or if you would like to teach me something about modern industrialization or this mod pack in general, leave it in the comments below. I read them all. And if you don't want to miss any future uploads, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.